The interest in advancing our understanding of corneal biomechanical properties has been stimulated by conundrums of ectasia mysteries related to refractive surgery. Predisposing risk factors are well described and validated. However, ectasia still occurs in some patients without preoperative evidence of risk factors based on standard screening criteria that rely mostly on front surface placido disc based topography and central corneal thickness measurements. New parameters based on corneal tomography and direct measurements of an individual's innate corneal biomechanical properties have recently been investigated and as an ongoing area of active research. Corneal biomechanical properties have been recognized to play a major role on refractive outcomes over the last three decades, that is, since the times of radiokeratotomy. This video reviews the importance of corneal biomechanics and introduces Oculus Corvus ST technology that was developed for accurately measuring IOP and assessing corneal biomechanics in the clinical setting. It uses an ultra-high-speed Schimmelflug camera to directly monitor corneal deformation during non-contact tonometry. Corneal biomechanical properties are known to influence intraocular pressure measurements. The current gold standard, Goldman ablination tonometry, is based on the imberg fick principle. Goldman and Schmidt assumed and postulated that normal corneas do not significantly deviate from the average thickness and that corneal resistance is counterbalanced Nevertheless, many studies have demonstrated that these assumptions were incorrect and that deviations of corneal thickness, corneal curvature, and an individual's innate corneal biomechanical properties significantly affect applination tonometry readings. Using a mathematical model, Lou and Roberts compared the influences of corneal thickness, corneal curvature, and elasticity on applination tonometry. This model demonstrated that variations in corneal elastic properties have a greater impact on IOP measurement errors than corneal thickness or corneal curvature. Better understanding of corneal biomechanics has the potential to improve the diagnosis of ectatic corneal diseases, thus enhancing the safety of refractive surgery. Moreover, biomechanical customization will improve outcomes of refractive procedures. High-speed photography has been developed over 100 years ago for taking pictures of very fast phenomena. The Oculus Corvus ST combines an ultra-high-speed camera taking 4,330 frames per second and the principle of Scheinflug imaging. The collimated air jet starts the corneal deformation from the undisturbed state to the ingoing phase, passing first applination into a concavity phase. The highest concavity point includes an oscillation period for starting the outgoing phase whereby the cornea passes through the second applination to return to its natural state. The recorded time of the measurement is approximately 30 milliseconds. An experiment was performed using three different types of hydrophilic contact lenses with a known thickness and polymer structure. Each lens was mounted on a sealed, tightly controlled, pressurized water chamber. The pressure was set from 0 to 70 millimeters of mercury with 5 millimeters of mercury intervals. The deformation amplitude, which is influenced by the stiffness of the lens in the system, was tabulated along with other variables. Each lens had a different deformation behavior. The internal pressure influenced the deformation response significantly since stiffness is a function of applied force and internal pressure. For example, the TAN-40 deforms 2 mm at an internal pressure of 0, 1 mm at an internal pressure of 20 mm of mercury, and 0.6 mm at an internal pressure of 40 mm of mercury. The thinnest lens with less polymer the TAN-58 deformed more at each pressure level. If we look at the stiffest lens, the TAN-40, at zero pressure and compare it with the most pliable lens, the TAN-58, at very high pressure, the deformation of the latter is less due to the impact of the internal pressure on the deformation response. Since we already knew that corneal biomechanical properties directly influence IOP measurements, this experiment further taught us that IOP also influences corneal deformation and thus reciprocally affects the accurate measurement of corneal biomechanical properties. In essence, it needs to be accounted for or controlled when taking corneal biomechanical measurements in the clinical setting. 
preliminary clinical data demonstrates that the deformation responses of normal and ectatic corneas are different. Qualitatively, keratoconus corneas start to deform earlier, have a more pronounced deformation amplitude, and oscillate more before entering the outgoing phase, with a typical oscillation when the cornea returns to the natural state. This approach has been found to be complementary to corneal tomography in enhancing sensitivity and specificity to detect ectasia. For example, this contralateral left cornea with normal topography, normal central corneal thickness measurements, and normal biomicroscopy from a patient with keratoconus in the fellow right eye has an abnormal corvus measurement, which complements abnormal tomographic thickness distribution findings. Considering the complete clinical picture, the left cornea of this patient is determined to be a true form frus keratoconus case with a very high susceptibility to developed ectasia. Another case with mild asymmetric bow tie considered a keratoconus suspect on topography has a normal tomographic thickness distribution profile and a relatively normal corvus deformation response. These two cases serve as examples that form frust keratoconus may occur despite normal topography and central corneal thickness measurements and that an abnormal topography with inferior steepening may be present in a biomechanically stable cornea. Thus, both demonstrate that tomographic and biomechanical characterization enhances the sensitivity and specificity of ectasia diagnosis. Preliminary study involving corneal collagen cross-linking procedures provides very promising data as well. For example, this case had custom PRK followed by corneal collagen cross-linking. Note the improved topography with regularization and improvement of uncorrected and best corrected vision. Despite thinning from the procedure, the corvus deformation response suggests improved biomechanical stability after the surgery. Corneal biomechanics have gained definitive momentum in ophthalmology due to the ability to now obtain reliable in vivo clinical measurements. We predict rapid improvements for measuring corneal biomechanical properties in the clinical setting and with it more accurate IOP measurements and better predictability of those corneas at risk for ectasia or ectasia progression. Thank you for your kind attention.